This is Restoration Bible Church and Ministries. We are a people of excellence living purposefully. And now, here is God's servant, Rev. Tunde Balanta, as he brings you God's word. We trust that you will be blessed as you listen. Good morning, church. Can you greet somebody to your right and your left and say good morning? Hallelujah. Last Sunday, we started talking about the El Shaddai advantage. And we're going to continue on that topic this morning again. The El Shaddai advantage by sacrifice or covenant by sacrifice. Let's go to Genesis 17. Um, that's where we took the reading from, 17 from verse 1. And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. Even before he became a father of many nations, God called him that. That word Almighty means El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one, the all-breasted one, the one who is more than enough. For us New Testament believers, you see, Abraham had the covenant with God, and the children of Israel benefited, even though they were not there, because in the book of Exodus, when they began to cry to God, God said he remembered his covenant with Abraham, Exodus 2.24. They were not there when the covenant was made, but God remembered them. For you and I, the Lord Jesus also caught a covenant for us. Amen. Even though you, maybe you were not there when it was done, we were not there when it was done, but that covenant has given us an advantage. And one of the thoughts this morning we want to look at is that the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross has credited into your account the El Shaddai advantage. The sacrifice of Jesus on the cross has credited into your account the El Shaddai advantage. The all-sufficient one, by the agreement that Jesus made, by his death on the cross, by paying for our sins, becoming sin for us, by becoming a curse for us, by absorbing everything that was wrong, by paying that price on the cross of Calvary, he caught a covenant with the Father, and the benefit has come into your account this morning. Is there an amen in the house of the Lord today? The children of Israel were not there when God and Abraham caught that covenant. But when they were in Egypt and they were crying, God said, I remember that I, I had a blood covenant with this man Abraham. And when there's a blood covenant, you are saying, I'm ready to die. I'm ready to lay down my life, if necessary, to keep my word. And we we'll find many examples in the Bible. How did David kill Goliath? He said, this uncircumcised Philistine. Because remember in Genesis 17, God told Abraham, you will circumcise yourself as a sign of the covenant. Child of God, your own heart has been circumcised when you gave your life to Jesus as a sign of the covenant. And every time a child of God is, is in, in a challenging situation, you can remind God of the covenant. You can remind yourself of the covenant. You can say, I have a, I'm a covenant child of the living God. Blood has been shed in my behalf. Jesus has paid the price for me. Remember Mephibosheth in 2 Samuel 9, Mephibosheth, you know, enjoyed the covenant between David and Jonathan. Though Jonathan was dead and gone, but because of the relationship, because he belonged to that lineage, David had mercy. I want to say to a child of God this morning, I don't care what's happening all around you. 
A thousand may be fallen and ten thousand on the other side. I want to say to you this morning, you have a covenant advantage over your life. The blood that Jesus shed on that cross, it, it, was, it was what sealed the covenant. Blood has been shed in your name. And because of that blood this morning, you will go through this year. No matter what is happening through this year, he said, I've been young and now old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I'm here to announce to you that your family will not beg bread to eat. You will have more than enough because he said, I do exceedingly, abundantly above all you can ask or think this morning. Child of God, you have a covenant advantage this morning because of the Lord Jesus. When Ruth married Boaz, what happened? She came into an inheritance she didn't work for. I want to say to you, child of God, you have come into an inheritance you didn't work for. Mephibosheth didn't have to do anything. He just had to be in that family. Whatever is happening to you, I want you to know that you have a new identity. You have a new passport with the blood of Jesus. Everything in the divine economy of the blood of Jesus, the Bible says in Romans 8.32, He that did not spare his own son, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? Yes, it may happen here to somebody you know. It may happen there to somebody you know. Things may not work in that person's business. Things may not work in the other person's business. But I want to say to you, because of that covenant relationship, that Jesus Christ shed his own blood for you, and his blood is the seal of this covenant, I announce to you, you will walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but you will fear no evil. I announce to you, child of God, you will, you will, you will excel this year. God will fill your mouth with laughter. You will open your mouth and God will fill it. God will make you an exception to evil. When evil sees you, it will pass over you. Do I have a witness in the house of the Lord today? It may be happening all around you. It may be happening all around you, but there's a bloodline there that the enemy could not cross. He said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. The blood of Jesus is a sign upon your life. It's a token upon your life. Wherever that blood has been put, I don't care what the enemy does, it's going to pass over you. It's going to pass over your children. It's going to pass over your family. I don't care what is happening all around you. The blood is speaking for somebody in this house. And because the blood of Almighty is speaking for you, favor has come to rest in your house. Increase has come to rest in your house. Promotion has come to rest in your house. You are going to rise higher and higher as those that come to Zion. Where there's a casting down, there shall be a lifting up over your head because you belong to him. Paul said, the angel of the Lord, whose I am and whom I serve. You are God's property and I want to announce to you there's no trespassing. Because you belong to God, they will not trespass over your property. They will not trespass over your project. You will rise higher and higher like the eagle that you are. There is no falling down for you. There is only rising up for you. If you are a believer, give the Lord a loud shout of amen in the house of the Lord this morning. He says, if you fail in the time of adversity, he says, because your strength is small. Our strength is not small. Our strength is not in ourselves. David told Goliath, he said, you may be as tall as Kilimanjaro, and I may be just a little bitty guy, but because of the covenant that I carry, I'm going to take you down. I don't know what is coming against you. He may look like an almighty Goliath, and you feel like a little person, but I want to say, because of the person backing you, because of the person backing you, because of the person backing you, You know, if you, are, if you know anything about soccer at all, if you see somebody substitute bent, and you see Messi as a substitute, you know you are in trouble. Because that means the people playing are better than him. The person is not on your substitute bent. He's actually with you in the game. Gabba the buyer. Do you understand what I'm saying? Ah, ah. Oh, God help somebody. I said, God, help me. Oh. I said, God, help somebody. I said, God, help somebody. He's in front of you. He's behind you. Hmm. Look at Psalm 44, verse 1 to 3. Let me read the message, and then we'll move on. Psalm 44, verse 1 to 3. We've been hearing about this God all our lives. Our fathers told us, the stories their fathers told them, how single-handedly you weeded out the godless from the fields and planted us. 
how you send those people packing, but gave us a fresh start. We didn't fight for this land. We didn't work for it. It was a gift. You gave it smiling as you gave it, delighting as you gave it. Friend, that's the El Shaddai advantage. Let me make this thought, share this thought. The El Shaddai advantage is the ability of God to turn your weaknesses and failures into opportunities and success. The El Shaddai advantage is the ability of God to turn your weaknesses and failures into opportunity and success. Hallelujah. You see, friend, sometimes you look at everything around you. For example, in Genesis 20, you can write it down from verse 1 to 7 and then 17 and 8, 17 and 18. You can write it down. And then Genesis 19.29. Hallelujah. In Genesis 19.29, the Bible says, And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of, of a plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the over, overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt. Now you remember that Lot, it was Kodoi that worried Lot. Remember his story? Well, with his uncle and then a little bit of struggle, and then he decided to, you know, move on and all that kind of thing. And then he moved to the wrong place, Sodom and Gomorrah, and he got in trouble. And the Bible says when God was going to destroy that place, he remembered Abraham and delivered Lot. I know in your family they think you are a nobody. But on your account is why many of them are still alive. God will say, ah, but that, for that boy, Timothy, for that boy, Igwe, I cannot allow this to happen. For that small boy, John, I cannot allow this to happen. Please put your name if you know you are born again. He said, he remembered Abraham and said, no, 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 no. I have a covenant relationship with this guy. There's no way I will allow his nephew to go like that. I want to say, because of you, your family shall be delivered this morning. Yeah. He said he remembered Abraham. He said, God is a covenant-keeping God. He said, ah, 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 because of Abraham, this cannot happen. Another time, Abraham himself lied to Abimelech. He said, the woman is my sister. And they took the wife in. He lied. You can call it a white lie, a green lie, a yellow lie. A lie is a lie. The man lied. The father of faith failed. Okay? I know that is a shock to some of you. But it shows his humanity. But your humanity is not what determines the covenant. God is aware of your humanity. But the covenant is based on his divinity. So when your humanity fails, the divinity kicks in. The man lied, and I'm sure he did all night prayer. Hey, God, oh, Sarah, oh, Sarah, oh, Sarah, oh, Father, deliver, oh. God went to Abimelech by night and said, you are a dead man. What is Sarah doing in your house? Don't you know? He said, it is the man himself who told me that it's his sister. He said, that's why I did not let you touch her. There are certain people you don't touch for anyhow. Children of God. Sometimes some people have problems in their life. They don't even know why they have that problem. Because they've touched what is not supposed to be touched. It doesn't have to be a pastor. Even you, you are anointed. Because you are carrying the Holy Spirit. He said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. You know you are also anointed with the Holy Spirit. You know he dwells within you. He said, whoever destroys the temple of God, him also shall God destroy. When people begin to tamper with it, maybe in an office, person say, I will show you. Don't do anything, just report to heaven. Say, Father, this man say, he will show your daughter. Hallelujah. Have you seen some of these um, shows they do? Maybe the, the owner of the company will come in and pretend he's a worker. Huh? Maybe go to one branch. Where maybe they don't know him. In another city, he will just go and disguise. And the manager there will be swelling. The person swelling for you doesn't know that your father owns that company. Your heavenly father owns everything. All the gas in the world, all the energy in the world, all the silver, all the diamond, 
Everything is owned by our Father in heaven. He said, for Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. Child of God, I'm here to tell you this morning that even with all the mistakes Abraham made, even Ishmael, God said, Abraham, I did not tell you to produce Ishmael, but you have produced Ishmael, I will still bless Ishmael because it is you that produced Ishmael. I don't know who I'm here to talk to, but your mistake cannot destroy what God has written concerning you. I am telling you, you are going to arise out of that thing. You are going to be the champion that God has called you to be. I say, my background, this one did not work. That, I say, you are coming out of that situation because you have got God in your corner. I say, you are coming out of that situation because you have got God in your corner. He said, rejoice not over me, my enemy. If I fall, I shall arise. I don't know where you are falling, but I'm here to call you that it is the season for you to arise. I say, it is the season for you to arise. It is the season for you to arise. You shall arise in this season. You will come into the fullness of your destiny. The God of heaven will surprise you. Anything not working in your life, God is going to turn it around. I say, God is going to turn it around. He's going to give you a break through. He's going to give you a time of praise in your life that you have never seen before. Is there a witness in the house of the Lord today? Isaiah 49 from verse 25 downwards there about. He said to, he said to you, shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? He said, I will contend with them that contend with you and I will save your children. And then in, in, in 43, up, 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 verse 3, 4 downwards, he said, he said I will, because you have been honorable, I will give men for you and people for your life. Touch not my anointed. That is you. God is talking about right now. Hallelujah to Jesus. So because you've been honorable, I will give men for you. Isaiah 43 verse 4, and then Isaiah 49, 24 and 25 is where I just quoted now. Now let's go to another very important point. A blood covenant cannot be effective without sacrifice death. There's a lot in there, but let's try to dissect it. Hebrews 9, 16 and 17. For where a testament or a covenant is, there must also of necessity be the death of a testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead, otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. If you look at all the blood covenant, what he's saying here, for example, is that if your father made a will and your name is in the will, you cannot take anything until the man dies. So, go and work hard. Don't pray for him to die. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay? So, but you see, a covenant itself, every covenant that God made, the examples we see in the Bible, you will find that death was involved. In Genesis 15, uh, verse 8, I believe I, we looked at it, this last time. God told Abraham, 15, verse 8 to 18, he told Abraham to take some animals and cut them. And he, he told Abraham, you know, they would take large animals and cut them in pieces by the spine and separate them, and the blood would drip on a pathway and you, will, you that cut the covenant will walk through that blood. What are you saying? As these animals have died, I'm also ready to die if necessary. Imagine a marriage proposal where the guy said, where, where you are buried, I'll be buried. You know, that, you know he wants to marry you for real. Hmm? This is for, for life. Okay? As these animals are cut in pieces, I'm ready to be cut in pieces. And the interesting thing we saw the other time was that in verse 17 of Genesis 15, and it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces, signifying the presence of God. Those burning lamps we see in the book of Revelation at the throne of God. It shows that the Holy Spirit or the presence of God or God himself walked through that animal sacrifice. That means God was saying, I'm also ready to give my life for this thing. A blood covenant involves the preparedness to give your life. The Passover was a, a partial reenactment of the blood covenant because, remember, Jesus gave us another Passover before he left. 
which was covenant based. They had been there for so many years and God was saying, I'll give you a substitute like Jesus to come. So kill the animal. Always blood involved. Even when Abraham had to circumcise himself, blood had to be involved. So it's going to cost something for anybody to make a covenant. Are you with me? It cost God his son to make a covenant. It's going to cost something for covenant. It's going to cost blood for a blood covenant to be made. Otherwise, it's, it's not a blood covenant. What is that telling you and I? Okay, let's just read uh, Matthew 26. Let's look at our own covenant in Christ. From verse 27. And he took the cup. May God give you revelation this morning. Can I get a good amen then? And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament or covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. This is my blood. He said, drink of it. He was saying, I'm going to pour out my life for you by covenant. Now, please note this. In your identification with Christ, you entered into covenant by death and sacrifice. Somebody say with me, in my identification with Christ, say it like you mean it, in my identification with Christ, I entered into covenant by death and sacrifice. Uh, let me explain to you. Go to Romans chapter 6. And this is the <laughs> basis of effective Christianity. Because if you don't understand this, your Christianity will be wobbling. Romans 6. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together, together in the likeness of his death, we shall also we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 to 6. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hebrews 12, 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed with, about with so many a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. 1 Corinthians 9.27, But I keep under my body, and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. I'm trying to paint a picture for you. In your identification with Christ, you see, in the mind of God, Jesus is our substitute, our representative. When he died, he, he didn't commit any sin, but he died for our sin. Hallelujah. He went to hell to take us to heaven. He became what we were to become what he is now. So we were buried with him. And that's what happened in water baptism. They take you down and they bring you up. You died with him. The old man is dead. Hallelujah. Now listen, listen to me, friends. You will notice something. Like on a wedding, when people come forward for a wedding, they will say, do you take this person as this, 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 this? Forsaking all others. Abby? Some vows sound like that. Forsaking all others. 
which means when Ruth married Boaz, she did not have one Moabitish boy. She used to phone. She wasn't texting one Moabitish boy. She had to leave all of them behind. Come on, church. Jesus paid by death. He credited you free of charge. But for you to live in covenant, certain things must be put to death every day. He said, I know I won't get any amen, but I came with my amen for this part of my message today. I said, I came with plenty of amen for this part of my message today. He said, I put my body under. He said, whosoever will follow me must take up his cross daily. He said, enter by the narrow gate. Hallelujah to Jesus. Your, your account was credited free of charge, but to live in covenant, you must realize that your, uh, the old man in you has died. Hallelujah. Imagine you marry a girl in church. By the time you get home, the girl says, well, uh, this is my former boyfriend. Can he have a room in the boys' quarter? How many of you men will just say, praise the Lord, that's okay, I'm a man of love. Some of you will have committed murder before you realize that you just killed somebody. Are you still with me? You see, if you want to walk in covenant, it's going to cost you something. It's not just, listen, when you come into covenant with Christ, you died with him. One translation says that um, I consider myself as having died, but now I'm enjoying a, a second existence, which is simply Jesus using my body. I consider myself, I think it's a distilled translation, as having died, but now I'm enjoying a second existence, which is simply Jesus using my body. My friend, the day you gave your life to Christ, you signed your own death warrant to the old man and said, old man that used to rule here, you are gone. Let me, let me give you another illustration that may help you. You moved into a house and the man that used to live in that house was a drug dealer. Terrorist, wicked man. And he died. And then you moved in. And then the police come and say, hey, hey. This is number so and so where this evil man used to live. We have come to arrest him. You will tell them what? He used to live here. But he died. I am a new man. The guy that used to live in you, who could not live for God, has died. Nobody believes that apart from a few people. I said the guy that didn't used to live for God in you has died. Give me a better amen if you are born again. And if you are still thinking about be, 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 being born again, get born again. I said, the old man in you has died. There's a new man in you who can live in righteousness and holiness before God. Otherwise, what are you saved from? You know, I'm walking very slowly because I'm making very important points. And I'm just going to be very slowly about it. Do you understand? There are certain things that have run in your family for a long time. But it will stop with you. Because the old man that, that could not deal with those things has gone. He has died. That's a new man on your inside. The Bible says, if the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the same spirit what is an identity? To be, to be the same. When they say, give me your ID card, some people will say, the picture must not be more than six months old so that the ID card you will give them, it will be the same. When they look at the spirit of Jesus this morning and they look at your spirit, when God looks at you inside, he sees the same spirit 
that is in Jesus that is in you. I said the same spirit that is in Jesus is in you. The same spirit that is in Jesus is in you. The same spirit that is in Jesus is in you. The same spirit that is in Jesus is in you. The same spirit that is in Jesus is in you. The same spirit that is in Jesus is in you. The same spirit that is in Jesus is in you. The same spirit that is in Jesus is in you. The same spirit that is in Jesus is in you. The same spirit that is in Jesus is in you. The same spirit that is in Jesus is in you. The same spirit that is in Jesus is in you. The same spirit that is in Jesus is in you. The same spirit that is in Jesus is in you. The same spirit that is in Jesus is in you. The same spirit that is in Jesus is in you. The same spirit that is in Jesus is in you. The same spirit that is in Jesus is in you. So why will a witch kill you? You are unkillable. I said you are unkillable. Economic recession cannot kill you. I say you are unkillable. You cannot be defeated. If people cannot find money, you will find money. If people cannot find success, you will find success. Because the same spirit that is in Jesus is in you. The same spirit that is in Jesus is in you. The same spirit that is in Jesus is in you. You are limitless this morning. You are powerful this morning. Every witch, every Every principality, every power in this world, when they see you, they see Jesus. When they see you, they see Jesus. If you believe that, stand to your feet and give the Lord a shout of praise this morning. Give him a shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. What? Ah, God help us. The same spirit. Not twins, the same spirit. As he is, so are we. In this world, not going to be. May God help us with revelation. That's why sometimes, you know, we go to one time, he said, he saw the devil in his room. Either he was sitting in the court or something. And we go to just looked at him. And just looked at him. He said, is it only you that came? He just continued sleeping. He didn't even pray, he didn't bind. Because the same spirit that is in Jesus. You see, that thing, when he hits you, when he hits you inside, you start talking. People say, what is wrong with this girl? Well, somebody would say, look, I'm going to show you. You say, eh? you want to show Jesus? You know, somebody was trying to rape one girl. And the, the man said, I'm going to kill you. The, the, the girl said, I'm the temple of the Lord. And my life is not in your hand. And I bind you. Do you know, all, all of a sudden, the man started shaking. The man started shaking, dropped the knife and ran out of her room. That's somebody who knows who she is. You are a God carrier this morning. I don't care what hell has planned. You are destined to win. Your business must succeed. Especially in this time. I pray for everybody. I pray for your business, your family. I say money, we meet money in your hand. Cashless or no cashless. You are going to high places. This week will be a great week for you. The heavens will open. The heavens will open. There will be showers of blessing. Showers of blessing. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for listening to today's message. Do join us same time next week. Follow us on our social media handles, Facebook and Instagram at Restoration Ministries International, Twitter and Mixilar at RBCM Online, and our website is www.rbcmonline.org. You can also be part of our live power park services every Wednesday by 5.30 p.m., and on Sunday by 7 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. respectively at Restoration International Conference Center, RICC, Romanew Extension, Kaduna South. God bless you.